Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my first update for my Rolling Project 10 pan. This is my focus project for the entirety of 2022 with monthly updates. And basically I'm working on every and any product category that I feel inspired to work on anything that I'm just excited to reach for with any kind of goal that I so choose. So it can be usage goals, completion goals, hitting pan, whatever it may be. I'm just doing my thing this year and I am loving it. I am so, so happy to be working on all of the products that I have chosen so far. And I'm feeling really motivated for project panning for 2022 as well. I will preface this video with the statement that I chose some long haul products. I selected items that I had never worked on previously as focus items. So I was either getting to know them a little bit more or they were things that I needed to work out of my collection, but they didn't have a ton of progress on them yet so I'm not rolling anything out of today's update yet but I still feel like I have some really good progress insights and just reflections from this past month and one additional thing that I am doing differently than other projects in the past is I'm also tracking how much I wear makeup for the entirety of 2022. I have been tracking since the 1st of January how often I've worn makeup and I have been working all on all of these products since the 1st of January too, just so you know. I know I posted my introduction on the 5th of January and I'm gonna continue trying to post these around the 5th kind of thing but I have been working on all of these items actually since the very 1st of January. Today's the 1st of February when I'm filming this. And so it'll still always be a month's turnaround between updates. And in the month of January, I've worn makeup 27 times. So sometimes I don't do a full face. Maybe I'll just do brows and mascara and a little bit of highlighter. Other times I'll do the full, the full glam but I've worn makeup 27 individual days of this year. And I feel like that's a pretty high number. I don't necessarily think that that will be the case ongoing, but I have no idea because I've never ever tracked something like this. So I will share with you the usage on the screen for each and every one of these products, how much I reach for them. But it's just something that I think will be interesting for me to keep at the back of my mind as I speak to these products and share with you kind of my predictions of when I'll be rolling things out based on the usage in comparison to how often I wore makeup too. So anyways, let's get on into it. Speaking of usage, let's just kick it off with the three products that I have usage goals on. So the first item is this right here. This is a product that I've been loving reaching for and I'm so happy I decided to put it into this project as a focus. This is the Vesca Moonlit Dream Cream Shadow. This is in the shade Lyra. It is absolutely stunning. This is like a rose golden kind of bronzy, warm rosy kind of eyeshadow color. It is very transformative and it works with so many different looks. I am wearing it today on like the inner two thirds of my lids on top of like a coppery shade. I've worn it with bronzes and with greens and with purples and pinks and it truly is such a beautiful versatile shadow. So because of its versatility, I've actually already reached for it nine times and my goal on this product is to reach for a 20 times. So I'm almost halfway to my goal. Perhaps I'll be able to roll it out next month. We'll see kind of how I'm feeling. I am not going to put any kind of like pressure on myself. I'm in competition with no one. So this may be something that I roll out at the very beginning of March or if I'm not feeling so inclined to reach for it at the same capacity that I did this past month, then maybe it'll be rolling out in the April update. But so happy to be reaching for this, enjoying it so, so much. And I can just really attest to how beautiful and effortless this formula is through reaching for it as much as I have this past month. And in the past, I've used it just infinitely already. So what a beautiful product. And yeah, maybe I should give you a, a little swatch before we move on to the next one. It is stunning. Just so effortless. It's so beautiful to wear on its own or with other shadows. And yeah, I just, I adore it. I just, I can't say enough good things about it. This next product is a powder blush and I set myself a usage goal of 40 uses on it, which is very steep. This is the Nabla Blossom Blush in the shade Coralia. This is a product that I've had in my collection for several years and it did not look like it had been used in any sort of decent capacity. It was looking very, very underutilized and it was very unfortunate. So that's why I set a goal of 40 uses on it. It still looks virtually new at this point, 
as you can see, but it's such a beautiful color and a beautiful formula. It offers a sheen to the skin. It's like a velvety, sheeny kind of formula with a little bit of glow, but nothing too over the top by any means. It's got this stunning peachy, pinky kind of color, but I find it very transformative as well. It can work with a wide variety of different eye looks or lip colors. I've reached for it a total of 20 times. Actually, I'm just looking on my notes here. 20 times, so I'm halfway to my goal, which I'm shocked by, but some of those times I did reach for it as just an eyeshadow. Today I have it kind of through my crease and on my lower lash line. I am also wearing it on the cheeks today. I did really build it up today just because I wanted to have that impact. I really think that this is the kind of formula, the kind of texture and color that really lends well to a very flushed look and I really enjoy it for that. Um, and yeah, I can't even believe I've reached for it 20 times. So I am halfway to my goal. I'm not sure that I'll be able to keep up that kind of momentum for the coming month, but this is such an easy, easy product to wear with so many different looks. So it's quite possible it might be rolling out next update. It still looks very new, as you can see, it still looks quite new, but there is a little bit of usage becoming more apparent now, and that's good. That is my goal with this. And the final product that has a usage goal at the moment is this ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Tinted Moisturizer, Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I have this in the shade Light 6W. I'm wearing it today. I tried to wear as many of these products as I could today but I'm wearing this today all over the complexion. This shade is maybe a touch too light for me, even still at this time of year when I'm at my absolute fairest, we're in like the dead of winter year, but I can make it work because it's such a sheer product. It's a very, very thin product that really becomes one with the skin. It offers a little bit of coverage, but it does not ever look cakey or makeup-y and because of its sheerness, it kind of lets my, my own skin tone kind of shine through. So it's fine that it's a touch too light. I'm able to mix it with bronzers or I do have a like dark concealer as well that I can mix it with to kind of give it a little bit more of a bronze kind of tone, but I don't find that necessary on the day to day. And today I'm wearing it independent on its own. My goal with this one is steep very steep. I set myself a usage goal of 60 times on this because it's a product that I've now had in my collection um, approaching almost two years. And I've heard with this formula that it can turn, it can expire pretty quickly around that time. There is a little bit of separation of the pigment here, as you can see, like at the top here, but down in this bottom part, I'm not noticing any sort of separation. I'm not noticing any sort of change in the performance of the product or smell of it. So I just want to make sure that I get a decent amount of use out of it in anticipation that the formula could change. And just knowing that I've had it for so long and it's barely showing anywhere, I just wanna make sure that it gets some love in. So I've only reached for it a total of 13 times. Not terrible, that's about half of the times that I've worn makeup this past month. So that is something that I could improve upon, but I'm really happy with that number to be honest because I don't want to kind of set myself up for getting burnt out with any product. I was wearing it very consistently at the very top of January. The first two weeks I wore it a lot and I'm not entirely sure about this. I'm gonna have to try to test it, but I'm nervous. I think it was starting to cause a little bit of congestion, a little bit of breakouts like here on the lower parts of my cheeks and around my chin. However, it was also kind of approaching that time of the month and I do sometimes, not always, but sometimes I do get a little bit of that kind of reaction to that. So I don't know for certain which is the culprit. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep an eye on how this reacts with my skin ongoing, but if I reach for it, you know, every other or every third day, I don't notice that to be any sort of issue. So it doesn't happen every time I reach for it, it's just when I reach for it very, very regularly. So in those 13 uses, I have not noticed any sort of measurable difference in the amount of product. I can see a little bit more possibly starting to show through at the top here, but I don't think I can make a new marking. I set it to here, and I still think that that's pretty accurate because this doesn't seem to like entirely settle. 
but I can fold the product down to about there. So I think that that seems right. Only time will tell with this one if we'll actually be able to see any sort of notable changes in the product. I foresee myself needing a couple more months in order to reach my goal and I'm totally okay with doing so. Now let's get into some products that I am trying to actually finish off. I chose some long haul products for sure. I challenged myself with this one, but that's all right. I'm actually super excited about all the products that I selected for this project. So the first item I have here is the e.l.f. Beautifully Bare eyeshadow base. I don't know the name. I'll put it on the screen. This is in the shade Nude Linen. However, this is a liquid eyeshadow or an eyeshadow base. However, you kind of want to use it. I think it's technically marketed as a liquid eyeshadow, but it's just a matte kind of beigey caramel kind of color. It's basically my skin tone when I put it onto my lids and I blend it out with my fingers. It truly just looks like I have nothing on my eyelids, which is great because it offers a little bit more longevity for my eyeshadows that go on top of it, cancels out all of the veins and discoloration that I have on my eyes, and it just allows things to lock in place so much better. I've been reaching for this all the time. Like I said, I'm just gonna put the rest of the metrics on the screen for you, but I've been reaching for this basically every single time that I've done my makeup and really enjoying it. It is going to take me a long time to use it up. There is a tiny bit of visible progress starting to happen. I can see a little bit of a window starting to come through here, but this is definitely something I'm gonna be working on for months and months and months, I imagine. But I did get a really great tip in my introduction and I have been implementing it to use this not only just on the eyes because that is very slow progress, but to actually use it as a mixer for cream cheek products. So I have mixed it with some cream blushes as well as cream bronzers to kind of mellow out the tone, make them a little bit more neutral and a little bit lighter. And it's been great for that. And that's how I'm gonna keep using it in combination with using it as an eyeshadow base as well. Progress is happening for sure, but it will be in this project for a while. This next product is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Powder. And yes, this is upside down, but I have perfectly aligned the product on the back. So I don't want to mess that up. My goal with this is to finish this off and I have reached for this a lot, but I use very little product when I reach for it. So I'm not able to make, well, actually, I might be able to make just barely a new line. As you can see, it's still pretty much where it was last update. I just don't use this to set my entire face. I generally don't set my entire face these days. I just use it to set basically this little triangular area right here under my eyes. And I just take a fluffy brush and work the product into the brush and then apply it to my under eyes. I don't do any kind of baking these days. I don't do any sort of major setting anywhere. So it's very slow going. This is going to be a long haul product again for me, but I'm so looking forward to working this out of my collection because I've had it for absolutely eons. And seeing as we're, you know, in the, in the nether regions of the, <laughs> why did I say that? Seeing as we're at the bottom of the packaging here, as soon as I kind of get a little bit farther into the curve, I feel like the progress will start going a lot faster. So I'm anticipating this to be something that I can work out maybe by the summertime. I'm hoping that to be the case, but it's super easy to reach for on the day-to-day -day basis. It's nothing too challenging by any means. So. I've been reaching for it consistently and happy to be making progress on it. Next up, let's talk about the one and only product that was a rollover from a past project pan. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in the shade Spotlight. This is a liquid highlighter in this awful doe foot kind of packaging. I am not a fan of this packaging whatsoever, so I just wanna work this out of my collection and get it gone. The product inside is actually really beautiful. Uh, let's watch it here. It's really beautiful. It's this light champagne-y kind of color and it really just bounces back the light in the most perfect way. There's nothing apparently glittery or chunky about it at all. It just is so, so skin-like. In the introduction of this project, I thought I was around here in the packaging, but I actually ended up like unlocking this. This is um, has like a locking kind of mechanism so that you can't spew out too much product. Well, I ended up unlocking it and kind of delicately squeezing out all the air. 
and this feels virtually empty. There's nothing in this product anymore. So I don't know if I was able to actually use up that much in a month, but I think all of it is living right here in this ugh, little reservoir. It's so not pleasant, but I think basically everything is just in the applicator. And once I'm no longer able to actually get anything out through the applicator, I am going to as much as you know, I want to work this out of my life. I'm going to cut into this product and use up anything that's remaining on the inside of the tube. So possibly next month you'll see a sliced into tube. Um, I'm hoping so. I'm really hoping that I can work this out in a matter of the next month or two. There really isn't much left in here and I want to work on some other liquid highlighters and glowy kind of primers in my life as well. Generally, I wear this on days when I have no other base products on. I think it just looks so beautiful and glowy on just the tops of my cheekbones, tip of my nose. I love, love, love the way this looks on bare skin. But I also do oftentimes wear it as a glowy base underneath of my uh, foundation or underneath of my tinted moisturizers. And sometimes I will wear it on top of cream cheek products, but I do find that I have to be a little bit more careful with that application, like on top of a cream bronzer because it can lift up or it can make those things kind of separate. It's not guaranteed that that's going to happen, but it, it does have a tendency to do that if I'm not super, super careful. So this is oftentimes something I'm wearing either alone or under products and I've been reaching for it a lot and I'm going to keep up that momentum because I am motivated to get this gone. I think it looks beautiful, but I just hate the packaging so, so much. Next up, let's talk about this lip gloss right here. This is the Bite Beauty French Press Lip Gloss in the shade Flat White. I did discuss in my introduction to this project that it was a lip product I hadn't reached for that often, but it was something that I had coveted and wanted and lusted after for so, so long. And I finally got my hands on it and then I didn't use it. And I have come to realize I don't love it to the extent that I had maybe worked it up to be in my head. I thought it was going to be something that I was just going to cherish and want to use all the time and I'm not having that experience with it. So this color, although it's not as opaque as it looks in the packaging, it is very light and it is quite opaque on the lips. It does definitely cancel out some of my natural lip color and it creates a very pale, pale, milky kind of color on my lips that isn't perfectly coverage though. Like it's very milky and it can be a little bit um, patchy. It also is quite a sticky kind of formula, which I didn't think that it was as sticky. Um, so perhaps it's turning a little bit or it's changed a little bit as it has been in my collection for several years at this point. And I also have noticed that this packaging is just not great. Like it's sturdy, it does the trick, but this lid is not very secure at all. It just can spin off pretty easily. And so this is not something that I'm going to take in my pocket or in my purse with me when I'm out and about, not that I leave the house that often, but I'm not going to do that with this, just given the fact that it could possibly leak out of my purse or into my pocket and like I'm not taking that chance. So this is something that's just going to live by my desk with me for as long as it takes to use it up. I'm not going to put any sort of major pressure on myself to use it up in the first quarter of the year or whatever. I'm just going to reach for it as I want to and uh, see what ends up being with it. I do want to get it used up and out of my collection, especially now that I know my experiences with it. It's a little bit too sticky for my preferences. It doesn't look as effortless and just uniform on my lips as I had hoped and dreamed. And it's something that I can't just travel with. This is not a product that I'm going to be keeping any sort of usage track on just because sometimes I reach for this midday if I haven't worn any lip products throughout the day or sometimes if the other lip products that I'm wearing are fading and this is just something that's easy to grab and throw on. So I'm not tracking my use on, on this, but believe me when I say I've reached for this a lot, I've really gotten to know this product and yeah, it's just not what I was um, hyping it up to be in my mind. And there's absolutely no visual progress that has been made, even though I feel like I've reached for it a pretty substantial amount of time. So next update, there may be some windows starting to happen in there. 
possibly not. It may be in part because this is very sticky and quite a thick formula. It may never actually show progress either. So we'll see what the coming months have to bring with that product. And then the other lip product that I'm working on is just an absolute favorite of mine. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Radiant Lipstick. This is in the shade Notorious. This is a beautiful rosy lip product and it's a sheer kind of balmy, very comfortable formula. It is an absolute beaut. Let me give you a swatch right here. It's stunning. It brings so much color and so much life to my face without looking too over the top or too makeup-y. It is what I'm wearing today. It's definitely faded by this point in the day, but it's such a stunning effortless lip product. And my goal is to finish it off. I have very little product left in here. However, I also had very little product when I rolled it into the project. It's extremely misshapen at this point though. And that's because as soon as I filmed my introduction, I went to mark this in my notebook to take a tally of like where it was at, how much product was remaining. And I took off the lid, rolled it up and my clumsy ass dropped it on the ground and it went poof like face first down into the carpet and it got smashed. It got destroyed. So I threw it into the freezer and it's never recovered. <laughs> it's never been the same again because it was just, it fell apart. I was able to save a good majority of the product, but some of it did, did go into the carpet. It's the first time I've ever freaking dropped it. Of course, when I started uh, focusing on it in a project pan, I'm still working on it. It still is okay enough to use. And I imagine by next month, I may be able to be completely flush with the packaging here. And at that point, what I want to do is decant it into some sort of container and just use it as kind of like a tinted lip balm kind of product and possibly as a cream blush. However, it does have that like glossy, balmy kind of texture to it that I'm not entirely sure will lend well to the cheeks. I haven't tried it on my cheeks yet, which I'm kind of shocked by. I will be doing that next month regardless and I will report back. It will be one of those bittersweet things when this is gone because it is an absolute favorite of mine, but it is due time that I work it out of my collection. And then this next product is one that I'm having the same kind of sentiment about. I am really happy to be reaching for it, but it will be kind of bittersweet when it's used up. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is a satin finish. I have mine in the shade Light Sand. This is such a beautiful concealer. I really like this formula. I am so happy I'm focusing on it. I had just about half of the product in the introduction and now I'm down to about here already. And I'm so happy to see that much progress. I thought it was going to be a little bit more slow going because I really don't need a lot of product. When I apply this to my under eyes, I generally just put one little dot under each eye and that's it but I have actually worn this a couple times as a full on foundation and love the way that it looked like that as well. And I may have marked it possibly incorrect. I don't know because that seems wild to have used that much in this past month, but it's pretty much been my exclusive concealer. Maybe not every single time, but for the most part I'm reaching for it um, in some capacity, whether it just be to spot conceal or to conceal just a little bit under my eyes. It is so beautiful. It looks so skin-like and so smooth under my eyes. And this is one of those few formulas that doesn't fall into my under eye lines like immediately. So I've been loving it so much. This color is really great for me right now, light sand. Um, in fact, it might be just a little bit too light, sometimes a little bit too brightening, but I've been really enjoying it and I will be working it out in a matter of months, maybe even next update. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think it's possible? No. No way, because I'll have to take out the stopper, but definitely for April, this will be used up. And my 10th and final focus product is this right here. This is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Capri Coast. My goal with this one is to hit pan on it, and that will take me quite a bit of time because it was a product that I didn't have a ton of progress on. But this is what it's looking like now. You can definitely see that the, like, embossing that kind of imprint has minimized. It definitely looks a little bit more loved, a little bit more used. And that's really the overall goal with reaching for this in this project pan. I just want it to look loved. So I don't have any sort of evident 
dip or major kind of progress happening on it, but I'm happy with where it's at. Up until very recently, I was focusing on my bronzer in my Roulette Pan Collab, my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. And so that was taking a lot more of my energy and effort, but now this will be my sole focus kind of bronzer. It is what I'm wearing today. And I just think it's so beautiful. It definitely pulls quite warm on me and it just offers this really beautiful, beautiful, bronzy, glowy kind of look to the skin that I am just so impressed by and so happy with. So happy I decided to focus on this as my first bronzer focus for 2022. I've been super enjoying it and I'm truly just looking forward to reaching for this for the coming months. As you can see, no evident dip or anything like that, but I'm enjoying reaching for it and I'm looking forward to continuing to do so. So that is everything for today's update. That is all 10 products that I'm currently focusing on. No new rollouts yet, but we're only one month into the project. So who knows what the next month will bring. Let me know down in the comments, which items you think I will finish off or hit my goals on first, but that is everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.